Hi and welcome back. So in this video we're going to look at how we can find the price in the code of this page that we are going to be requesting. So now we're not looking any longer at the browser but instead we're simply going to get the HTML code of this page and then search through it until we find the price. The great thing about that is that then we could do the same with any other item on this page. Um, which means we could start potentially building some sort of uh, application that would let us find prices of items and possibly even alert us when they go down in price, which would be quite interesting. We're not going to be building the full-blown application at this stage, but we will get back to that later on in the course. In order to be able to search through this HTML code and find the data that we're looking for, we're going to be using another library. This library is called Beautiful Soup. And it's actually a very, very popular library for doing exactly this. So if we go to our requirements.txt and we type the name of the library and the version, which we can find by going into the preferences, project interpreter, press plus, type beautiful soup for beautiful soup for, and the version is 4.4.0. So that's your library name, that's the version, so we can close that, close that, type beautiful soup 4 equals equals 4.4.0, and then go back to your app, install the requirement as you know, and then it gets installed, and we can import it from BS4 import beautiful soup. And once again, PyCharm is doing its thing where it doesn't. and run it and there we go. So as I said this is a small bug with PyCharm. Sometimes it takes a wee while or sometimes you need to run the app or press install or play around with it until it works but this is uh, what you want to be doing uh, here and notice that we're no longer using the library name or the package name in here um, or in fact here either. So what's this? Basically this beautiful soup for package contains a folder uh, or a file called BS4 and this BS4 file is the one that contains this class or this thing that we want to import and um, so this is why we're doing it this way um, but I would not worry too much about that simply know that from the BS4 file we want to import this thing and this is what we're going to be using so now we've got this request we can get the content of the page by doing request.content. So I'm going to create a variable with the content of the HTML code of this page. Then we're going to create a soup variable and this soup variable is going to contain a way of searching through this data using beautiful soup. So we're going to do beautiful soup content and we also have to tell it html.parser and what this does is it says okay we're going to be using beautiful soup with this content that we've got and we're telling it this is a html content so we want to use the html parser that's built into beautiful soup uh, to search through this data then we'll find the elements that we're looking for which is this one and we can do that by saying soup dot find and then what we're the name we're looking for is the span tag and then it has a bunch of attributes that we are going to use. Notice how the IntelliSense, this is what this is called, already tells us what we should be writing. So there's a name, there's some attributes, ATTRS whether we want to search recursively or not, this is true by default, and some text and some more uh, optional arguments. I wouldn't worry too much about the text or the optional arguments. The recursive one is more interesting because uh, that means it will not only stay on the topmost level of the HTML, on the topmost tag, but instead it will stay, it will drill down and go to all the tags and all the children tags not too interesting for you now maybe 
but nevertheless I would not modify it and leave it as the default value which is true. And then here we go with the attributes and this is a dictionary like the JSON dictionary that we've seen before. So item prop is price and comma class is now price. Okay, so now when we execute this we should be finding this element here. And finally we can print the element dot text and this will be this text content here. I'm going to delete that. So let's run it and see what happens. Well we've got 115 pounds but it is on a bit of a strange location. Notice how there is a bunch of text, a bunch of white space before the, uh, the numbers and also some white space after the numbers. So we can remove this leading and trailing white space with the strip method. So this element.text is a string and all strings have this strip method that you can call on them this is what the dot means that will remove all leading and trailing white space. So let's call that again and now indeed we get the 115 pounds here. However this 115 pounds is not a number this is indeed a string because it has this pound symbol in front of it. So what can we do to remove the pound symbol and to indeed convert this into a number? Well this is what we're going to be looking at in the very next video. How to remove the pound symbol and convert the remaining, remaining numbers into an actual number that Python can understand and add and subtract and things like that. So I'll see you in the next video.